For the tart crust, instead of using graham crackers, I am going to use vanilla wafers. I thought that would just be a cool way of getting such great flavor. Also, it add the same texture that your graham cracker crust will make as well. Okay, so vanilla wafers. I got the mini ones, so it'll be so much easier to crunch up. So I am adding about a whole box <laughs> of the mini vanilla wafers. Uh, then after that, we'll be adding cold butter. I'm gonna add a stick of cold butter to this as well. Into the food processor. And this is going to be, this is gonna give it great texture. Vanilla, I know it's vanilla wafers, so I'm still gonna go ahead and add about a teaspoon of a vanilla flavoring and put it in the food processor um, like this here. Right. And then we're just going to pass it Texture that the graham cracker will give it, your vanilla wafers will give it. Right. And we are. I'm gonna add a little bit of the last piece of butter that I went ahead and chopped up. You wanna make sure the butter for this could be room temperature. Um, but I still like ice cold. I still like uh, my uh, butter to be ice cold. Not frozen, just ice cold. <laughs> also to this, I like to add a few pinches of cinnamon. Probably about two pinches of cinnamon as well to your vanilla wafer crust. So we have vanilla wafer, the whole box. <laughs> One stick of butter and two pinches of cinnamon. And a teaspoon of vanilla flavor. All right. And this is how it comes out. It's nice texture. And we have our little tartlets, our little tart shells here. This part is really, really easy. Just go ahead and add it in. And then you can work it with your fingers or you could use a rubber spatula that I'm using. And you wanna make sure that the texture on this is still kind of crunchy. You don't want it too wet because you are going to add your wet batter to this. So you still wanna make sure that you have a nice, thick, dry crust as well. The butter is what's going to help your crust stick together. And that way when you add your wet batter, we're gonna add our cheesecake batter to this and also our chocolate batter to this. It will set up real nice. So go ahead and just use your fingers like I'm using. I'm using my thumbs at this point and it's gonna be a little sticky, that's okay. I have some flour here, just a little bit like this. And we are going to make sure that we get them all inside of here. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process for each tartlet. Okay, so pie crust. Pie crust is really easy. If you have a great recipe on to how to make a pie crust, go ahead and use it. But this one here is really easy. So I am using whole wheat, 100% pastry wheat. That's what I'm using for this one. So you can use organic flour, the unbleached flour, but I am going to use the 100% whole uh, pastry wheat. So I'm going to add two cups of my wheat pastry flour. For pie crust, you don't have to shift your flour. Um, I am 
I'm doing mine in my food processor. So it went, once I pulse it, it is shifted up for me. So I'm doing two and a half cups, sorry about that. Two and a half cups of my wheat, my pastry wheat flour. And I am going to do, cause I wanted a little bit more sweeter. So we're gonna do one third cup of sugar. And I am using white organic sugar. Here and then for salt, I'm going to use kosher salt. You can use regular salt, but I like to use the kosher salt. Then I'm going to use one tablespoon of the kosher salt. Okay. So once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it in my food processor. You can do it by hand if you do not have a food processor. Sometimes I just do it by hand because all of these machines and trickets and stuff. All right, here we go. Okay. So, trick, if you do not have a food processor, get yourself one of these. You see this here? This will cut your butter into your flour and it will give you pretty much the same technique that the food processor does. The only thing is that you're gonna have to work your arms. So you'll be like me with the big arms. <laughs> but if you do not have a food processor, get yourself a pastry butter cutter, just like this here. And this is what you would use to cut your butter into your flour. Okay, so let's go ahead and pulse it. All right, couple pulse. The sugar, the flour, and the salt. And remember, you do not have to ship it because I am using a You do that a few times. Loosen up the flour. Again, this is wheat pastry flour. Okay, so after that, I have my cold stick of butter. And so for the cold stick of butter, you want to cube it. Um, you could do regular, you could do a long cube like this, or you could do smaller cubes. It doesn't matter. But you do want to cube your butter. Make sure your butter is nice and cold, okay? The colder the butter, the better it can come out. I am going to use the entire stick of butter and that would be an eight ounce stick for me. Okay. All right. And then I am going to add a few teaspoons of ice cold water. Yes, so it's ice in the water. <laughs> because I want to make sure it's ice cold, okay? Yes! So let's go ahead and pop it a little bit. And it's hard to see the you can see how the butter is breaking down in the flour. Okay, so let's go ahead and add, I necessarily don't add the ice cubes. I just add ice cubes to make sure that my water is cold. So this would be about six, I would say maybe six. Talking to you, I probably lost count. I think that was three. This is four. This is five. Yes, I have to count, okay? And this would be number six. And I probably add two more, so maybe six to eight. Um, it depends on how much butter, how much uh, flour, but we use two cups of flour, two and a half cups of flour. So So maybe another ice cream. And I don't want to keep doing it too much. Here it is, it's starting to crumble. So there it is, we have our ball. It is coming up. So this would be what, number what? I lost count. What's the number, cameraman? What? Number seven, all right. <laughs> Sorry, camera woman, because it's my daughter. You know, I want to be correct with that. Okay. So here we go. Yes, look at there. So we're going to put this to the side over here, because you can drink the ice water. Okay. So here we have, oh, 
and this is look it's sticking really nice look at that that is the texture that we want okay so this is where things get a little bit dirty in the kitchen all right so i'm going to use a little bit of the flour that i have uh, you can eyeball how much flour that you may need um i do want it a little sticky i don't want it too too wet but you know i'm going to do one more teaspoon and by this time i have lost count of it this is number nine right ten so eleven so about eleven but it depends on you and how you would like your job. Like Alright, and I think that is far as it is going to get. Yes. So look, it's a little wet how I want it. See, look at that. And again, the reason why it's so brown because I am using what? Wheat pastry flour. Alright. So let's put it over here. Turn it over, it's a little crumble, but that's okay. We're gonna work our magic on it. We're gonna work our magic on it. We're gonna get these clean hands in here. And we have the flour that's on my table. And I have a stainless steel table, but if you have a wood, uh, a wooden um, board, you can work it on that as well. Or if you have granite, you can do that. But I like my stainless steel table. So we are going to, here it is. And what you wanna do is use your palms. See, I put my hands down like this and I use my palms. And we just wanna take it and just, I say palm it out. <laughs> All right, you don't wanna overwork it because you have the butter that is in here. And you don't want the gluten to overwork and then it becomes like, really 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 sticky okay so the roller pan i have my flour and again if you have your own recipe of how you do your own pie crust please use that recipe but i'm just showing you how i am making a really really quick pie crust made with whole wheat pastry flour okay so roll it out it doesn't have to be super thin but it's, you don't want it super thick. <laughs> okay. And I added more sugar to what you would do a regular recipe is because um, the wheat is a little bit more nuttier than the unbleached flour. And plus, I kind of wanted to give it a little bit more texture. Okay, so look, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. You know, if you want to be fancy, you have the little cutter thing, you can do the little cutout right there. That's fine. We're going to have to do this. And then I have my knife and I roll my knife around. And it does not have to be perfect. You know why it doesn't have to be perfect? Because by the time you put it in here, you are going to shave off the excess that you do not need anyway. So look at this. I am taking my three fingers and I'm taking my thumb, holding it like this and taking my three fingers and pushing it around. So I'm gently pushing it into my pie, my pie pan. And you wanna pull it up a little bit. And you can make, it could go over like this. I'm not gonna have mine go over, just a little bit up here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fork and you can make the cute little widgets like this one, like I'm doing here, or you can make it a little bit more like this over, and you can bring it in again. And then this way, it can lean over your pie pan like that, Real quick, let's push it down. All right, and then you could just take your knife or your finger, like I do. <laughs> but if you want to be pretty with it, you know, then you can take your knife 
and just run it across like this here. Just like this, look at this. And just run it across, run it across here. Get the assets off. I'll show you, see how that looks. All right, ooh, ooh I feel like I was on the <laughs> And then you wanna bring your fork, and this is the fun part right here. You put your fork, see how like I'm pressing my fork into it, and then that will give it that pie. You'll know it's a pie then when you start seeing the widget, the ridges of the fork. Okay, we got a little piece missing there, so you know, we'll just cover it up like that, like we do in Play-Doh. <laughs> And again, just use your fork, use the back of your knife, sorry, use the back of your knife like this here and just bring it down like this. And you could go over it if you want to do it so perfect, you know, you can do it perfect or you can leave it like this. And your family would think that you spent all day making pie crust, but you didn't. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish these two up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the lemon curd for my lemon pie. I'm gonna make a lot of lemon curd because I'm gonna keep it to add to other things during the week. So I'm going to do eight lemons. That should give you about two cups of lemon juice. And I like to use fresh lemons. Um, some people use concentrated lemon juice. But I like to use fresh lemons because I have a lemon tree. <laughs> but uh, go ahead, I use eight lemons. That'll give me two cups of lemon juice and I use an entire lemon for the lemon zest. Okay, so go ahead and we wanna do the lemon juice. And we'll put it in the medium saucepan and make sure our heat is on low. So then I'm gonna add my lemon zest right into my lemon juice because I like my lemon like, like, perk. <laughs> add it on here and let it warm up a little bit. While we're doing that, we have two cups of lemon juice and I will be adding about a half a cup of sugar. I don't want it super, super sweet. Yeah, I do, I want it sweet because I want it to taste just like lemonade. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and add our half a cup of sugar to this. Um, yeah. <laughs> half a cup of sugar to that. We're gonna take our whisk and we are going to whisk it and let the sugar melt in there. Okay, so before that gets hot, we are going to add three egg yolks separated. We want the egg yolks. Hurry up before it scrambles and make lemon scramble eggs. We don't want that. All right. If you're not comfortable with working with the heat, as such as myself, go ahead and remove it first. Okay, there we are, look there. And it's all blown up, yes! Ah, see, we caught it before it turns into lemon scrambled eggs. So it will thicken as we go along. And just keep stirring, keep stirring. You can remove it a little bit if it gets a little bit too hot to cool the temperature. And then we're gonna add it back. This is something that you will have to keep stirring and you have to stay with this. You cannot walk away when you are making lemon curd. And look how thick it's getting already. Look at that, it is getting so thick. All right, look in here. Oh. This looks beautiful and it smells delicious. Okay, so I keep it on medium, about medium high heat. And like
like I said, you do not want to walk away from this. Keep stirring it. Let's take it off the heat. And then at this point here, we are going to add our melted butter. So I'm going to add a half a stick of melted butter. I'll chop it up. You can add a little bit in at a time if you like, but I make this all the time, so I'm just gonna add it in like this. Put it over here, again, heat, and watch the butter melt. And keep stirring. So this is gonna take probably about four minutes for it to thicken and come up nice. And again, this is an easy way of making lemon curd easy recipe for me. All right, here we are, lemon curd as it thick, thickens up. One can of coconut milk. I'm using coconut milk to add a coconut rich flavor. One cup of white sugar and a half a cup of white sugar, three egg yolks, then I'm going to go ahead and place my custard back on the stove onto a low heat and keep stirring consistently. Three teaspoons of real vanilla flavoring and one tablespoon of cornstarch for thickening. And I'm just going to keep stirring until my custard comes up nice and thick. And then I'm going to add one package, which will be one pound of un sugared coconut flakes, pecans at the end, and make sure they are unsalted pecans. And there we have it, my coconut filling. Now that we finished our German chocolate frosting, go ahead and let it cool completely down. Okay, all right, so we made the German chocolate butt cakes. Here they are, <laughs> yes. So we use, so I use the um, miniature bun cakes. Oh, these smell so good. So it will bake upside down like this and usually it'll like top off around, but that's okay. Go ahead and take your knife and you just not cut like right at the edge, but kind of like in the middle and go ahead and just cut it like this. Look at that, it give it a nice flat top. Bring it over just like that. Go ahead and repeat the process for each cake. And the reason why you do that, because if you don't cut off these tops, the cake is going to like roll over and we don't want that. Presentation is everything. Okay, here are the vanilla pound cake that I made as well. So I am going to do a, a vanilla German chocolate, a vanilla German chocolate, a vanilla coconut filling as well. Um, not everyone eat chocolate, so I just kind of wanted to balance it out. We'll put it in the middle there. Okay, so I love my ice cream scooper. I have a whole bunch of them. I have like little tiny ones, little big ones. But anyway, I use a um, ice cream scooper. That's about the right one to use. And I'm going to go ahead and scoop out my my coconut filling that I made. Oh, look at that. It looks like a little ice cream, little, huh? <laughs> um, this one here is about three ounces. And I want to put it all the way down just like that. Mm -hmm. Look how pretty that is. That came out nice. And we're going to go ahead and do for the both of them. You don't have to put as much as I'm putting on. 
um, pretty much just eye it for yourself. And you could put as much or as little as you would like to put on there. But I want to make it a little heavy. The cake is a little bit light. So, and then I used the bun cake because it had like the little hole in the middle. So there we are, put that one in there. And then one more on top. Oh, that looks good, does that not? All right, look at there. How beautiful is that? Okay, so I have melted chocolate. Now I have semi-sweet chocolate chips right here. And I also have German chocolate. Um, at any store, any grocery store, I carry the German chocolate bars. Um, the German chocolate bars is just a different, um, a different uh, uh, chocolate. It's the same chocolate, but it just depends on how much milk, how less of the cocoa powder it is to make the chocolate bars. And the German chocolate smells delicious. So a lot of people think German chocolate cake um, because it's like German. Well, it is, but it's really the German chocolate that makes it. Okay, so I went ahead and melted the German chocolate bars down. Uh, you can look at my other YouTube page. I have one um, specifically on chocolates and you can view that one and it will show you how to melt chocolate. But it's really, really simple and easy. You could do it on a broiler or you could do it in the microwave. Okay, so my chocolate is still nice and warm. Here it is because it's stretching out. Look how beautiful that is. And the color on the German chocolate is beautiful as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and we are going to use this one here. So I like to start holding my spoon. If you're not getting comfortable with doing this, you can always use a smaller cup or you can use like something like this with the, like a little pour but i do chocolate all the time <laughs> i love doing chocolate okay so here we want to start here and we want to start in the middle and kind of just run it around the edge like this i want to get all that goodness of chocolate on there just a little bit like this oh look how beautiful that is Okay, and let's come with the second one. So it's kind of like a mount of chocolate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly, you just want it to run on the sides. Look how pretty that is. Can you see that? You probably can see that better than me, huh? Because I'm way back here. Well, look at that. Oh, all right, and then that's enough right there. And then, because I just want to be so decorative, I want to take some little, mini little chocolate chips and run it over like this because we wanted chocolate yeah chocolate <laughs> and i have some white chocolate chips and i want to cascade the chocolate chips here i don't want to melt the chocolate on it i kind of want the chocolate chip for like a little drama but you'll see here when i finish that see we can get one here one there and over here just a little not a lot all right and then what we can do is take your spoon and you want that little thin 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 and just put it over on the white chocolate chip like that so it just looks like it's blended in so you want to make sure it's real oh, my chocolate okay show must go on here we go. Let's get this just like that. Look how beautiful that is. Oh my goodness. That is gorgeous. All right, so we're just gonna let that dry right there and then I'll scoop it up. Okay, so for the middle, I have the blonde, uh, uh, I wouldn't say German chocolate cake. I guess now it'd be like coconut filling cake. This is blonde without chocolate. And with that one there, I am going to use caramel. 
So you can make your own caramel or you could purchase a really, really good caramel. Uh, there are some really great caramels in the store or caramel as people like to say, they say caramel or caramel, whichever one you say it, however you say it, it's still delicious. All right, and then let's get some back dripping. Oh, look at that. Oh, you just want to sing on this one, huh? Look how beautiful that is. That is gorgeous. Let's get a little bit more just on the sides right there. All right, and there it is. There it is. We have our German chocolate butt cake and our blonde coconut filling cake. Okay, so we finished our we finished our tart with the vanilla wafers. Went ahead and put them in the oven and we got a nice little cookie, little crust. We are now going to fill it with the chocolate grenache. All right, so melt the chocolate on this one here i used the semi-sweet uh, chips for this one and heavy cream with a little bit of cornstarch and a little bit of sugar all right and make sure that that's nice and warm on our warm chocolate. We wanna go ahead, let me get my whisk right here. Make a little bit of mess with the chocolate, but that's okay, right? It's okay. All right, I have a little whisk right here. Let's go ahead and get that whisk in. And then I am going to add, all right my whipped cream and cornstarch and we're just gonna whip it in really good I prefer to use uh, my hand to whip this not put it in a food processor that way you can control all right here we are look how great that looks and look how that ganache just came out really beautiful. Nice and beautiful. Okay. It's really, really easy to do. You just melt your chocolate, warm your heavy cream, put about a half a teaspoon of cornstarch, about a half a teaspoon, about a tablespoon of sugar, and then your chocolate, put it in there while it's warm, not while it's hot. Okay, I mean, while it's warm, not steaming hot or cold, look at that. And we're just gonna pour this ganache into the vanilla wafer. All right. And you could use the graham cracker, but I like the vanilla wafer for this one because it gives it like that cookie crunch. Here we are, look how beautiful these are, see? Look at that golden brown, look how golden brown that tart came out from the vanilla wafer, um, vanilla and sugar. And we're just gonna add our chocolate ganache right into this. See, this is the, this is the easiest dessert and yet the most decadent dessert. I'm gonna make four of them because I have four kids and a husband. <laughs> And uh, I have four pies, so they're gonna have to share. <laughs> All right, and look at this here. And just leave it rusted. I like it rusted just like that because you can see the cookie crust all around it here. And then you're just gonna put these in the refrigerator, not the freezer, just the refrigerator for about 20, 30 minutes. And it's just gonna cool down and it's gonna be really, really beautiful. Okay, so the vanilla wafer cookie crust with the chocolate grenache tarts. Okay, so the whole wheat pie crust came out beautiful. Look at these. They came out really, really pretty. 
put me and I cool them down. They smell so good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the fill-in. We are going to do two separate fill-ins. So I'm gonna make two pies each. And the first one I'm going to do is a lemon fill-in. So the lemon curd that I made um, a little bit er earlier, this is it. Once it sits up, and I let it sit for overnight. Um, and so I uh, put it in the uh, refrigerator and it got really, really thick. Ha! This came out so beautiful. Just take your time with the lemon curd. That's all you have to do. It's just really just take your time um, and be consistent with it and it will come out great, trust me. Okay, so let's start the filling. So instead of me just taking the lemon curd and putting it in the pie, I am going to make a cream base for it. So we are going to start with some cream cheese. Just a little bit of cream cheese. So on this cream cheese here, um, and we're only doing two of those pies. I do have some extra dough, so if you do have extra dough, you can double the recipe. But I am going to use a third a cup of cream cheese to the food processor. And then I am going to add heavy whipping cream. All right, this is going to be now you could do it with the mixer, but um, I'm gonna do it with the food processor. And this here. And then I'm going to add my vanilla to it. Just a little bit of vanilla, like this. All right. And actually, what I'm gonna do, because I forgot that I'm doing two foods at one time. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the entire package of the cream cheese. And that's about eight ounces of the pack. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and add that and the sugar. So it's a pack and about a half a cup of white sugar that I'm going to add and go ahead and start it. You can't hear me, but I'm going to slowly add the heavy cream to it. So this is about a half a cup of whipping cream. So good. Oh, look in here. Look at that. Look how that came out. That came out nice and silky and fluffy. You can have you can do a hand mixer. Um, if you do the hand mixer, do it for a very, very long time because you want it nice and creamy and silky, just like that. There. Alright, let's put this behind me. So we can see the pies. But remember, I am going to do them both at the same time. And I'll show you how to do that at the same time. You don't have to throw it away because I am going to use the, the food processor again. All right, let's clean up this mess a little bit. All right. And look at this. Look how that came out. That came out really nice. And it's nice. It's smooth and silky, just how I want it. Okay, so I'm gonna do about two, I'm doing two pies each. So I'm not gonna use this entire mixture because I am going to use it for the next pies that I am going to do. Now these pies here are no bake pies. So I don't have any egg or anything like that in it. Okay, and so for this one here, I am going to add the lemon curd into it, into that cream, look at there. And that's the cheese, cream, and whipped cream like this. 
And then I want to add some lemon zest. So if you like me and you like a good perk, <laughs> this would be really great for you. I'm gonna add probably about a teaspoon, a small teaspoon of lemon zest. I'm not gonna throw away my lemon because I need my lemon. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm not gonna like whip, 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 whip it. I'm just going to fold it in like this. So we're just gonna fold it in. We're not gonna mix it all, all together, but just fold it in like this. I still kind of want it to be a little separate because I want the taste of the whipped cream and cheese. And then I still want to taste that lemon flavor as well. Okay. And that's it. Just whip it nice and easy. Okay. So, if you could tell this particular pie with the lemon, I already put a little bit of lemon at the bottom of it. And then I'm just going to come. If you have a pastry bag, you could use the pastry bag and make it as pretty, beautiful. You could sit it up high, however you want to do it. That's fine, but today I'm just gonna show you how we just come. I'm just gonna put it in like this. How pretty is that? And then the other one, I just, woo, it smells so good. I mean, it is like lemon flavor, okay? Yes. All right. Take your spatula and just go around with it a little bit. And you could decorate it however you want to decorate it. That's fine. If you want to use the pastry bag, you can use the pastry bag. I am just, just for saving time, I'm just going to whip it around here like this. Look how pretty that is. That came out really, really pretty. Okay. All right, and then after this here, I am going to cut, I'm gonna add just a small dollop and just kind of mix it in just like this so you can see it. So you can really see that it's the lemon. All right, do the same one for this one. I'm add a dollop at the top. That's probably about a teaspoon of dollop. And then I'm gonna take my spoon and just go around with it. And then that way, someone eating a pie, they can really see that it's it's lemon. Yeah, it's, it's lemon. <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to use a clean, you could use a, a so paper towel like this, just kind of clean around it a little bit. I think I'm making a mess with it, but that's okay. And I want these to look rustic. I don't, I don't want these to look like that they're like perfect, perfect. Because sometimes when you do perfect, perfect desserts, people are like, did you really make that? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I made it. <laughs> but for at home, my kids, they don't care. They like, ma, just, just put it on the plate. We'll eat it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to slice lemon. I did slice it pretty, pretty thin. Cut it in half. You can triangle them however you want to do it. Um, but I'm going to cut it in half like this, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. Not too, too thick. Kind of a little thin. All right, so I have my sugar here, I have my lemon, and I'm just going to take it, put it here, and then I'm gonna put one right here. And it doesn't have to be fancy, you know, it could be a little rustic. And this, and we'll just set it right up like this. Look at there, and I'll just set up. And then we'll do one more over here. Look at there. 
All right. Ooh, that looks good, doesn't it? Ooh, 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 ooh. I said, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> That's the proper way, huh? All right. Look at this lemon. Mm -hmm. You don't have to dip it in sugar, but I recommend that you dip it in sugar. <laughs> Just because it candy, the lemon, and when the uh, lemon dry out, like you put this in the refrigerator um, to set up to eat for later, it won't dry the skin of the lemon out. It'll keep it nice and candy. Okay, so look, here we go. There's the lemon, here we are. Look how pretty that is. Ah, so pretty, so pretty. Okay, so for our next pie, we're gonna do it in the same, at the same time, like I said, because it's really easy. As long as you have your pie shells done in advance, then this dessert will be super, super easy. Okay, so we have the heavy cream, the cream cheese, the vanilla, and a little bit of sugar. So I have some fresh organic strawberries here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I have a banana that's brown. You want a brown banana. You don't want the green banana. Nope. All right, so it's gonna go quick. Let's just dice it here. Let's leave about this much. And since we have our lemon right here, what I'll do, I'll take this banana and I'll squeeze a little bit lemon on top. And the reason why I'll do that is so that it will not turn brown. We do not want a brown banana, okay? So I have these bananas here. Let's go ahead and put this in our mixture. this back in here and we're gonna add the bananas so I add probably about a half a cup of bananas and I have some really beautiful strawberries look how beautiful these strawberries are all these are really pretty I don't want to chop it too thin if you notice I kind of left it chunky because I want a chunky texture on the second pie and let's just add this in here. Let's get one more nice, beautiful strawberry. I don't want the strawberries to overpower the banana. It's okay. All right. Here we have our top. All right. This is gonna be good. Mm -hmm. oh, it's so good. Here it is, strawberry banana cream pie. Good for springtime, good for springtime. Okay, let's have our other tarts that we have here. And we are just going to pile it on. And I want to leave it a little chunky, like I said earlier, because I want the texture of the banana and the texture of the strawberry. All right, look at this. This is going to set up beautifully in the refrigerator. Okay. And if you have more pie, like I said, if you make more pie shells, you could just double the recipe. Or you can eyeball the recipe. So this one here, I'm gonna put this. And if you wanna do a piping bag, you can. But I'm just going ahead and use my little spatula right here. And we're just gonna bring it up and fold it over just like this. Look how pretty that is. That is really pretty. So just bring it around inside it. And it's nice and chunky too. Mm. So you're gonna get that flavor. When you bite into it, you're gonna bite the strawberry and bite the banana. All right, so let's go ahead and decorate it. There's some really nice strawberries here. And I'm gonna leave the green top on the strawberries. And I'm just gonna slice it. 
just like this, just slice it down, and then just bring it over and fan it out. Okay, I'll do it one more time for you. So I'm just gonna slice over to the edge, and make it just like this here. And then we get that, just take your finger and bring it over to the edge and just twist it out. Look, and just fan it out. Look how cool is that? All right. Go down a little bit more deeper if you have to. Try not to cut it off. <laughs> and there you go. Take your finger, fan it out. All right. And then we just want to get a little bit of that sugar on it like this. And just fan it. Ooh, look at that. Look how pretty that is. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of sugar, not a lot. And just fan it across. Put it in the middle, that is so nice. Okay, the banana that I put the lemon on so that it does not turn brown. Let's go ahead and get a few long this. All right, so let's just put the banana, let's fan the banana right up under it. And so everyone can see that it is a banana straw berry pie. Okay, look how cute this is. Look at this. So we have the lemon pie and we have the strawberry pie. And we call these pies um, freezer box pies because it's no baked pie. <laughs> Has no egg, none of that in there. And all you have to do is just whip it up, put whatever flavor you want to put in it and put it in the refrigerator. Okay, you could put it in the refrigerator overnight. You could do it that morning before, or you could do it right before you serve dinner or after you serve dinner and put it in the refrigerator, or you could put it in the ice box for about 20 minutes, take it out, and boom, you have dessert. There you are. We have our lemon cheese, our lemon, or I want to call it lemonade, ice box pie, and our strawberry banana. Oh, I am finished with all of the desserts. Yes, all right. So I made the pastries today for my beautiful daughter for us to have tea time. But since she's not a tea drinker, we were gonna drink it with coffee. But we have someone that came along and joined us. <laughs> we are in COVID time, lockdown, so everybody's in the house together. We're trying to steal away and get some little time to ourselves. But Zakai, are you gonna join us yes. for our pastry time? Yes. Okay, all right, so you wanna go ahead and try it? All right, so I made some coffee for you, Zanli. Just how you like it. Thank you, Mom. Your espresso coffee. I'm gonna put mine in the teacup. You don't get any coffee, okay? So what would you like to try first? We have the strawberry um, banana icebox pie. We have the lemonade icebox pie. German chocolate with white chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate the vanilla pound cake with the coconut pecan filling and the chocolate grenache with the cookie crumb. You like? I like it. Okay, you like no. it? Okay, go ahead and cut it. Can you, let's see, let's cut it. Ooh, look at there. All right. And use your pink carrier. Ooh, look, that is so nice. Doesn't that look nice? And what do you? What would you like to try, Zakai? Can I eat it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. I don't like caramel. <laughs> huh? Look at the cookie crust right here. So. And look at how this one came out. That one came out beautiful. Look at that. That's nice. How beautiful that came out. Okay. You want to try that one? Yeah, just try. Okay, let's cut into that's just, it. Woo! That's just satisfying. That is chocolate. <laughs> All right. Look at there. Look how beautiful that is. Here you are. Are you gonna make me feed it to you? <laughs> oh, that came out good. And this is the vanilla wafer. Remember the vanilla wafer cookie crumb? That's good, huh? Yeah. See? I can't go Mmm. <laughs> and the grenache is nice and light. It's like a really nice, airy, moussey kind of feel. 
because I did it with the whipped cream. Mm hmm It's good, huh? Oh, it's light. Nice and light, huh? And then it has that nice cookie crumb from the vanilla wafer as well. Mm. All right, so this one is the icebox pie. Let's try this one. I'm <laughs> I don't want to mess it up because it's so pretty, but that's okay. And I kind of want to get want to get some of that crust. Now this is the whole wheat pie. The whole wheat, I'm sorry. The whole wheat shell. Well, mm -hmm. wait. I'll try some. Huh? It's lemon. Wow. Pack her up. That's lemon, 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 huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and look, it matches your earrings. <laughs> oh, I guess so. Yeah. Mean. Try it. Like, I mean, I can't go out anything, so. Ooh, it's really like That's lemon, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's lemonade. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it is. And this one is the strawberry and banana cream, the cream icebox pie. And you gotta get it with the crest because the crest is like the best part. It got that punch to it. It does? It tastes like cool. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but I said it. Mm. And then this is strawberry banana. That's the strawberry oh. banana cream. That tastes good. Why am I feeding you? Yeah. Because I cannot grab anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> Taste that one. Look, I can't. Or I can't get it. I, I can't get it. <laughs> Got it. All right. Oh, yeah. Is that it right there, huh? Oh, my. Is it bananas in here? Yes, bananas yes, and is. strawberries. What? And a little cream cheese. That flavor kind of comes last, huh? See, I used to eat strawberries as a kid. <laughs> and the banana flavor comes last. And so all of this will go great with tea or coffee, but today we're gonna um, have it with coffee. Okay, thank you for joining me for our pa my pastry show. Everything that I've done is really simple, really easy to do. Again, check on my YouTube, Chef Tobias Cooks, or visit me at cheftobias.com. And also remember, join us next time at Cooks Time. See you. Bye. See you. Uh. I heard they checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message on me, ain't no flexing on me, my attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessings for me, my success has only made them envious, they got upset. I had to put all their egos in check. I want the money to pay.